In this video, we'll talk about solving ordinary differential equations with MATLAB's ODE45 solver that is using the 4-5 runga kutta method. In our prior video, we had talked about developing numerical methods to solve differential equations. The learning objectives of this lecture is to learn how to use uh, ODE45 to numerically solve differential equations using MATLAB's built-in differential equation solver, ODE45, uh, and we'll use event detection with ODE 4.5 so that we can understand when a certain event occurs with our differential equation. Excellent documentation on ODE 45 solver can be found on MATLAB's website. The link for this is in the lecture slide, so please read through and understand how to solve uh, ODEs using ODE 45. I'll summarize here for you the main points of ODE45. The syntax is of following for the basic ODE45 solver, and we'll expand upon this later in this lecture. But for now, what we should expect is two outputs if requested. So the first one, uh, if none is requested, would just be T. So that would be very unuseful. That is the time that is going to be evaluated this function at and y. So we'll learn about those. And then what we're going to pass this function is ODE fun, t span, and y not. So these inputs, ODE fun is a function handle. So it doesn't have to be called ODE fun. It's just the first thing that goes into ODE 45. ODE 45 solver, or 45 really, assumes it's a function handle of the differential equation you're asking it to solve. Now some things of note, so here, for example, if we have our model differential equation, the function handle would be ODE fun at t comma y negative 0.5 times y. Now notice that I did t even though time, the independent variable, does not show up in this differential equation. Uh, that is because for ODE 4.5, you must have T and Y inputs, even if only one argument is used. So even if the independent variable, such as time, so that's the first variable, if that doesn't occur, and so it doesn't matter if I put Y and T, uh, ODE 45 will assume your function handle has the first variable as the independent variable and the second one as the dependent. Uh, so Y... Uh, must be m by 1, that's the dependent variable, and the independent variable t must be a 1 by 1. The input t span uh, at minimum needs to be your initial time and the final time that you would like to solve this differential equation at. Alternatively, you can give it different time points in between t0 and t final. And why not is the initial condition because ODE45 is uh, a numerical method for solving initial value problems. So you must give it an initial value of y. y is a vector, uh, and it must have the same length of the output of ODE function. And we'll talk about uh, when this is the case later. The outputs that you should expect is t, where t is the numerical method evaluation time points, and that's going to be an n by 1 vector. And y is the numerical solutions array, uh, and that will be an n by m vector, where each row in the y solution will correspond to the row of t, so the solution at time t. Now, it's a by m because our y for ODE function can actually have m number of equations. So the uh, equations here will actually correspond to the different columns of y, and I'll show you when this is the case later. One thing of note, and it's buried at the very bottom, is that ODE45 can only solve first order ODEs. So we'll learn how to get around this if in case we were needing to solve in a higher order differential equation, which is often the case. Um, and another thing is that the method is Runga Kutta 4.5. So I've I uh, put a link here. This is called the domain prince pair method, uh, and I put a link to the Wikipedia page on this uh, if you'd like to get more information on this numerical method. Uh, suffice it to say, it is highly more accurate than uh, RK4, and it is also more stable than RK4. So 
So I'd like to go through an example now using a ODE45. So we'll apply it to our, our model equation, and we'll have our y naught is 1, our t naught is 0, and the t final, the time we'd like to know the solution at, is 10 seconds. So uh, what we'll do here is, just as before, since this is a quite easy uh, differential equation, we will uh, use our analytical solution, we'll compare that to the output of our numerical method, uh, ODE45. Um, and so what you see here is that even though this differential doesn't depend on t, uh, what we're going to do is still make this independent, or independent variable t here as our first input, even though it doesn't show up in this equation. So this is the form we have to give it, it uh, for ODE45. And then we'll pass in our time as t naught and t final. And then we'll pass in y naught. Uh, and the initial value will set to be 1. So this is our new initial value problem. Uh, and what we're going to do here is go ahead and plot that. So I'm going to run this solution. And one thing that we see right off the bat is that, uh, and this is actually part of the ODE45, is that it's can actually adjust its time step. So before, previously, like RK4, we were using uh, constant H's. Now, this is an adaptive model. So here, I'm taking, as it's changing more, I'm taking a tighter time step with ODE45. And what you can see is it tracks almost perfectly to our analytical solution. Uh, so one thing I'd like to do is take a look at the outputs that we got from this ODE function and compare them to what we'd expect. So uh, what we said is the outputs t is going to be t, so it's 45 by 1. That means it took 45 points in order to do this numerical uh, method to solve this ODE. And y is 45 by 1. That's because we only have one uh, differential here. So it's not a system with two differential equations. So it's only one. So it's uh, 45 by 1. So the length of t and y will be similar. With ODE45, we are limited to solving only first order ODEs. However, you are familiar with many ODEs that are of higher order, such as a second order ODE, f equals ma, that is the mass times the second derivative of our position. So uh, how can we use ODE45 to solve these? Well, higher order differential equations can be reduced to systems of coupled first order differential equations. So uh, one note on notation here, and this is often uh, the case that uh, if you're taking a time derivative and a lot of times our independent variable is time, so this is the derivative of the dependent variable y with respect to the independent variable t, we usually use the dot notation. Instead of y prime, it's y dot, and y double dot would be the second derivative of y with respect to time. So uh, let's consider the following homogeneous second order ODE. How can we reduce this to a system of first order ODEs? Well, we can accomplish this with a change of variable, and I've left a link for you here on uh, your lecture slides to uh, the online Paul's online math notes it's quite useful uh, and it's actually got great notes on a lot of math so hopefully you already know that and you can use it for your math classes but the the step here is we need to solve this higher order differential in terms of uh, the highest order so basically you solve for the highest order differential so here is this second differential uh, so it's negative b y dot minus c y dot or sorry, CY, uh, divided by A. Uh, and what we can do is create a coupled system of first order ODEs with a change of variable. And how we accomplish that is we say that Y is equal to Y1, uh, and then the derivative of Y1 will set equal to uh, another variable, Y2. And if we took the derivative of Y2, uh, we can set that equal to our Y2 double dot. And the reason is, is because uh, this is the derivative of y2, and the 
derivative of y2 would be the second derivative. So if I took the derivative of both sides of this equation, that would be the second derivative of y1, which is the second derivative of y. So this is our coupled, it's coupled in y2 and y1. Uh, so this is our coupled system of first order ODEs. So now we could use this to solve for ODE 45. So the first step in making a function handle for a system of ODEs that is a higher order, so like a second order ODE, is not writing it out in MATLAB. So the first step is almost never write it out on MATLAB. The first step is actually put down your uh, computer and grab a piece of paper and grab a pencil and on your paper write out this system of ODEs. Uh, so for here, uh, like we just solved, I would say y dot or y1 dot is equal to y2 and y2 dot is negative b y2 plus c y1 over a. Uh, and the next step is to define a function handle in MATLAB. So once you've written it out on paper, then you can go into MATLAB and define a function handle. Uh, so here is this function handle. Uh, where t is a 1 by 1 and y is an m by 1. That's what we were given by MATLAB's requirements. And the function handle should be m by 1. So now, before, we just had a 1 by 1. But now that we got a system of equations, it's actually going to be 2 by 1. And this should be the right-hand side of ODE in the corresponding row of our function handle. So actually, let's look down here in our function handle. So this ODE function, it's at t comma y, where it's always the independent variable first, then the dependent variable. And y in this case is actually uh, here, it can actually be a two by one. And so the first ODE you'll see is here. Now, what this is is y2. So this will correspond to these ODEs. And the second ODE is this right-hand side. So the right-hand sides we'll put here. So it's y of two, that's because the output of this second differential equation should give us y2. The output of the first differential equation should give us the solution for y1. So we'll see this second differential equation will be negative b times y2 plus c times y1 divided by a. And now I've written a function handle that is coupled in both y2 and y1, and it is a 2 by 1. So the output of this function handle should be 2 by 1. So I'd like to use MATLAB's ODE45 to solve the numerically the second order, uh, and this is a second order nonlinear differential equation. It's homogeneous. Uh, that is the angle of our pendulum at a given time. And this you've probably derived in physics. I'm not going to go through the derivation here, but this is the governing equation for this pendulum with a mass. Uh, and let's say we have an initial angle of 30 degrees and an initial theta dot, remember that is d theta dt. So this is the initial angular velocity equals to zero. So we're releasing it from a rest. And we'd like to solve this numerically using ODE 45. So is the first step go to MATLAB? And your answer right away should be no because this is a second order differential equation. We can't actually just write this up straight off the bat into a ODE function handle. We need to write this as a coupled set of first order ODEs. So we'd like to write this, rewrite this system. Uh, and so we can say theta one dot is equal to theta two, and then theta two dot, which is uh, theta one double dot, that's over here, and that's equal to negative g over l sine theta one. So this is our system of ODE. So this is always the first step. Now that we've done this, let's go ahead and take a look in MATLAB at how we'd execute this. So given this initial value problem, let's see how we would write this up in MATLAB. So the first step is to define our constants g. Uh, one thing is um, it's very useful when doing problems, homework problems, is don't just leave out these units. Uh, it's actually very important to include the units as a comment. That way you can go back and see, oh, am I using the right math? Uh, and so I'm just going to tell you that our g is in meters per second squared. Our length is in meters. Uh, and then since we're going to do this in degrees, remember MATLAB, 
uh, is in radians when it uses sine. So we need to convert this to radians. So this is going to convert uh, my degrees to radians. Uh, so this is the initial value for theta, and then the second one is the initial value for time. So this is a 1 by 2. Uh, and then my ODE function for this coupled set of equations, uh, well, the first equation here is theta 1 is equal to theta 2. That's why I've got this as theta 2 because theta two should be the output from my second differential equation. Uh, my second differential equation is negative g over L times the sine of theta one, and I'm putting that as one because this should be the output from the first ODE divided by L. So now I've written this up as a, uh, T is a one by one. Now it didn't show up here, but that's okay. I need to include it for ODE 45. And theta is a two because I've got this semicolon here. So this is the first row. And then on my second row, I've got this second uh, coupled ODE. And this is a first order ODE. So we've reduced what was a second order ODE into a coupled set of first order ODEs. One thing I'm gonna do here is uh, I'm actually going to force my ODE45 to just evaluate it with 100 time steps between 0 and 5 seconds. Uh, so if we want to solve it at 10 seconds, we'd go 0 and 10. But let's just take the solution at 5 seconds. So I'll pass in ODE fun, T span, and our initial condition. Now one thing of note is since I've got two differential equations, I need two initial conditions in order to solve this. So however many ODEs you have, you must have the same amount of initial conditions. So, and it also assumes that this first initial condition it's going to get corresponds to this first differential equation. That's why I've given it uh, theta first because theta one corresponds to theta and theta dot is theta two. So that's why I've given it a zero because we have our initial velocity was equal to zero or zero radians per second. So let's go ahead and plot this uh, numerical solution. Uh, and what you see here is this follows the oscillatory nature that we would expect from our pendulum. Uh, now let's take a look and investigate uh, what happened with our solution here. Uh, and one thing you'll notice is that t is 1 by 100 and theta, the output of my ODE is 100 by 2. That's because the first column corresponds Oh, and it actually won't show me the, oh yeah, it is showing me the preview here. So this first column corresponds to our theta. The second column corresponds to theta dot. That's why I have my initial equation here of zero radians per second. So when I let this go, it's got zero radians per second. Now let's go back and take a look at how I plotted that. Now this theta is giving us the solutions uh, for theta and theta dot, but the times that they correspond to is given by this time vector, which was our output from ODE45. And we can see here, if we want the position at t equals five, we can say theta of uh, 100, because that is in the column or sorry, row 100, and let's take all columns of our theta solution. So this first answer, and actually what you'll see here is it doesn't really correspond. That's because uh, at t equals five seconds, this is the theta in degrees. So if we wanna get that uh, in degrees, what we're gonna do is multiply it by 180 divided by pi. Uh, so now we can see it's negative 28 degrees and the velocity is actually negative 28 degrees per second. Okay, um, what we can also see is that if we wanted the solution at t 
time equals 1, uh, since we took a funny h, uh, there is no time equal to 1. Uh, and so we have a time of equal to 1.001, that's t of 21. Uh, so I can say theta of uh, row 21 and all columns, and let's get that in radians, so let's multiply that, or sorry, in degrees, so let's multiply our solution, which is in radians, times 180 divided by pi. Uh, and what that will give us is that at time of one second, our velocity is equal to uh, negative three radians or degrees per second, and our uh, angular position is negative 29.8 degrees. So let's take a look back at this uh, baby boot differential equation that we uh, took a look at at our previous numerical methods uh, that we had quantified its classification of a differential equation. Uh, and what we have here is the time derivative of the angle with respect to the vertical axis of this pendulum. So just like the angle we had solved for in our previous pendulum, however, this pendulum is free to rotate. So this is a free joint here, so it'd be free to spin around the axis of the pendulum. So that is that angle is given by Q double dot B. So this is a coupled nonlinear ODE 45. So how would we solve this? Well, always the first step is to write it out uh, by hand as a system of coupled first order ODEs. Uh, that way we can give this in the proper uh, ODE function handle. Okay, uh, one thing here of note, I'll just call this first value a constant, A1, and I'll call this one a constant, uh, A2. And we can say that QA is equal to QA1 and QB is QB1. So this is our change of variables here. Uh, and then what I can say is QA1 dot is equal to QA2 and QB1 dot is equal to QB2. Uh, and then, well, I have that QA double dot is equal to QA2 dot if QA is equal to QA1 and QA1 dot is equal to QA2. That is equal to this equation here, uh, and that is just this here. I've replaced QA with QA1, QB1, uh, I've replaced QB with QB1, QB with QB1, and then QA dot with QA1 dot and QB with QB1 dot. Uh, and then our second uh, higher order differential equation, which we'll simplify as a first order, is the de time derivative of QB2 is equal to negative sine QB1 cosine of QA1 uh, times QA1 squared. So that's our system of uh, first order ODEs that we'd like to solve with uh, ODE 45. So to understand how to solve this ODE or system of coupled ODEs using ODE 45, I'd like to first talk about the ODE function. So as always, the first variable that appears is going to be our independent variable. Here this is time. Uh, and then I'll say our dependent variable here is Q. It can be anything. It doesn't need to be uh, really matching with this is just any variable. Uh, but then here's our system of equations. And what we see here is I have one, two, three, and four equations. So the first equation is QA1 is equal to Q, or the derivative of QA1 is equal to QA2. So I'll set that equal to Q3. The reason I do that is I'll say this third equation is the time derivative of QA2. So the output of this should be QA2. And then similarly, that QB1 dot is equal to QB2. So this fourth equation right here should be the output. So that is um, Q4. The third equation is now the equation I have for QA2 dot uh, and so that will be 2 times 508.89 times the sine. And in here I have QA1. So I will do Q of 1 because that should be the output of the first differential equation. Minus sine of Q2 
times cosine of q2. One thing of note here is that when you're doing these, uh, anytime you're giving a function handle, you want to make sure you're using the element operations here. So I'm using dot multiply for all of these and dot divide as well as dot exponentiation. Okay, and this fourth equation here uh, is given by this. It's the equation for q dot of b2. So I've got four coupled equations. And now let's go back to this initial state. So what I'll do is the first value for this initial state should be the initial value for this angle QA. And the second one should be the angle for QB. So I'll give it a large angle for QA and then we'll give it a slight off axis angle for the boot. So just a one degree and this degrees to radians is really just this uh, conversion factor here. So a slight angle of one degree and let's see what happens. So here uh, I'll pass this in, this ODE function handle to my ODE 45. The time interval is I'll give it a thousand time steps between zero and 10 seconds. So I'll make it do a lot of work, uh, but that's the power of MATLAB is that I can have it do thousands of computations for me almost instantaneously. The initial state is uh, this initial state variable and I'm actually going to increase so you can use this function ODE set so go ahead and look up that if you'd like to but I can increase the relative tolerance that's the, uh, abs the absolute value of the step difference minus the previous or divided by the previous step and also just that absolute difference uh, between steps. Uh, so this will set or this will bound and this doesn't matter if it's capital E or lowercase e. Um, this will set the bounds for my error. So I'm going to get a more uh, increase the accuracy of my ODE 45 solver. So the initial one that it gives you is times 10 to the negative fifth. So I'd like a little bit more accuracy here. Um, and then uh, what you should know by now is that this output state matrix, and I've called it a state matrix, that's because Q doesn't quite make sense because the first output I'll get is QA, the angle QA. The second one is the angle QB but the third and fourth are the velocities. So it's um, a lot of times they'll refer to this as the state matrix. Um, and I'm saying this QA is the first column, QB is the second column. And why is that? Well, that's because those are the first and second equations I put in my ODE function. If I had rearranged these, uh, if I had swapped them around, it would be uh, whatever I had rearranged it to. Uh, and what I'm going to do here is go ahead and plot this solution. Uh, so let's run this code. Uh, and what you'll see is this is a chaotic angle. Uh, and what that means uh, is that this angle is varying widely. So over 10 seconds, it's rotated by 1400 degrees. So even though I gave it just a very small initial angle for QB, that's one degree, uh, it, it actually becomes unstable and starts to rotate rapidly as I release it from an angle of 90 degrees. So one thing that's quite interesting with this is that this solution changes with different angles. So if I release it with an angle of 45 degrees, I get a rapidly or wildly different solution. So let's go ahead and solve this next one. Uh, it's the same ODE function. I'm just giving it a different initial condition. Uh, the angle QA is 45 degrees and the angle uh, QB is just one degree still. And let's see how this works. Okay. And the solution now what I have is the angle for QB is actually oscillating quite steadily back and forth between uh, 1 and negative 1 degree with a slight amplitude increase uh, here and there. But so what that's saying is this boot uh, is going to be rotating back and forth along its axis quite stably. Uh, and if I go to an angle of like say 90 degrees, that's actually unstable. And this uh, solution actually is plotted here. So these angles uh, in the green are actually unstable angles and angles in white are stable angles for the angle QB.
One thing of note is an ODE uh, that is said to be stiff uh, and when you should choose ODE 45. So uh, some functions are what we call stiff and this function here, it's rapidly changing in this one area and it doesn't change as much here. Uh, now if you use an adaptive ODE solver like ODE 45, uh, what it will do is to get its error down to a, its accepted tolerance. What it's going to do is take a ton of time uh, intervals here. Uh, and so what that will do is it'll solve extremely slowly. So ODE 45 is not good choice when you're trying to solve stiff ODEs. Uh, so it's when your time step needs to be really small. And this is actually a property of the numerical method, not the actual exact solution, but it's actually the numerical method. So uh, on MATLAB, there are quite a lot of references for several different numerical solvers. So ODE 45 is just a one of them, but it is generally good for non-stiff problems. So if it has a sharp uh, change in your function, then it could be stiff, and in which case you're going to want to use a stiff solver like ODE 15 stiff or S, uh, or ODE 15i, that's fully implicit. So this is low accuracy. One thing that's nice about this uh, is it can be uh, uh, used for uh, unconditional stability. Next, I'd like to talk about event finding with ODE 45. Uh, so let's say we've got a falling apple without drag, and it's governed by this following uh, second order ODE where the time derivative of y, so the acceleration, is given by negative g. Uh, and what we can do is plot this uh, solution from 0 to a time of 2 seconds. Uh, and what you see here is that this position is going from 10 meters to negative 10 meters almost. Uh, and what we see is that it crosses 0, but we don't know exactly when. And a lot of times what we like to solve for is actually when an event, like when my apple hits the ground, when the position y is zero. So we can't really just do that off the bat here uh, with ODE 45 because it's just going to solve it for a whole bunch of time steps without regard uh, between zero and two seconds. So how do we accomplish this? So event finding with ODE 45, or actually any of, a lot of the ODE solvers will do event finding. But in general, I think the uh, documentation on MATLAB is quite poor uh, in contrast to most of the documentation, which is excellent. So what I'm going to do for Lab 9 is I'll put a supplemental notes that, that I write on how to do uh, event finding. In general, it boils down to three steps, where the first step is you need to write an event function. Uh, and more can be found here and or also in my supplemental notes. Step two, before calling ODE 45, you need to use ODE set and set one of the options to be an event function. Uh, and so this is the following line of code that has to be executed before solving ODE 45. So you can't do event finding unless you set options, uh, and this is really any variable name, but uh, usually it's called options, equal to some function ODE set. And what we're setting is events. And then you point it, that's what this at handle does, to your event function. So the function you wrote in step one. And finally, the third step is now solve ODE 45 using options. And so the syntax for that is T comma Y comma T E Y E and I E. Uh, and then, so those are the outputs, and then you pass it, ODE function, t-span, why not, and then options, which have been set by this ODE set function, uh, where TE is actually the time of the event, and YE is the solution at the time of the event, and IE is actually, it tells you which event it's detecting. So let's take a look at MATLAB and see how this would be executed. Okay, so over here on the right, I have my notes that I'm gonna give you for your uh, lab, and this is on how to use event finding. Uh, but step one is write this event function. So the inputs of this function must be the independent variable t followed by the dependent variable, and that's m by one. And the output arguments 
have to be the following. So you're not really allowed to select the output arguments, uh, and that is value, uh, is terminal, and direction. Uh, and so is terminal, if you set that equal to zero, it'll just continue the solution. Uh, it'll just tell you where the event occurred. If it's one, it'll actually stop the solver when the event occurs. So like maybe when your apple hits the ground, you don't need to solve the differential equation anymore because the apple should stop moving because it hit the ground. So the direction is actually you can uh, set zero to detect the event from all uh, directions. However, you set it to one, then uh, it will detect it only if the function is increasing and negative one only if the function is decreasing. Okay, that's what you're going to pass. And so uh, the function code, actually, you could just copy and paste this here. It's going to look the same for any events finder, but you will change the values of value is terminal and direction. So that's what the output of your events function must be. Uh, and if you want the position, so y1 is going to be the position, y2 would be the velocity. So we actually want to stop when the position is equal to uh, zero. And it can only stop if it's the expression is equal to zero. We can't actually change that. Unfortunately, you can't like subtract a constant, uh, like say three, and find when the position is equal to a height of three. Uh, so you can only set it equal to zero, unfortunately. Uh, you could change your governing equation though. Uh, anyways, uh, if I wanted to find the, when the velocity was zero, I would say the value would be y2. Okay, so uh, down here, over here is, uh, I've actually got my ODE, my governing ODE for my apple. So uh, y1 uh, prime is equal to y2, and then y2 uh, prime, or the derivative of y2, is equal to just gravitational acceleration. Okay, uh, and the T span, I'll solve this from a time of 0 to 2 seconds, and I'll say S0, which is the state, uh, and I'll say the initial position is 10 meters and the initial velocity is zero meters per second. So I'm dropping this from a rest. And of course I don't have drag in this equation. Uh, and I this is really options. So I could set this to options. Uh, it doesn't really matter what it's called. Uh, I actually like to call this uh, a zero finder. Uh, and the reason I call that is kind of like I understand that this is the option for finding zeros because there's other options such as uh, relative tolerance and absolute tolerance that I can increase. So uh, I now when I see OD45, I know this is a event finder. Uh, anyways, uh, what I'm asking for is T solution, Y solution. So that doesn't change from before, but I'm also the time of the event and the value of Y of the event. Um, and so here I'll pass it this height ODE, T span, S naught, right, initial position or initial values, and now this options from our ODE set. So this always has to occur before our events function. One thing I highly advise is so you don't have to save a separate function for your events function. Uh, so I don't have to make a new M file. I can actually just write this sub-function in this script. So there's no, this won't exist in my directory, uh, but it will exist in this script. Uh, so that's actually quite convenient. Uh, and then this at symbol here will point and give this function handle to ODE set. Okay, so when I run this, what I expect is that unlike our previous one that just went all the way from zero to two, it should actually stop when the apple hits the ground. So let's go ahead and run this code. Oh, I need to change my folder. And what you'll see here is now I have the solution. So it actually didn't continue on, it just stopped. So the time of impact was 1.4 seconds. Uh, so let's take a look now uh, in MATLAB. One thing that is 
interesting is that if I go to ye, I have the position, so it didn't quite get to zero. So, And that makes sense because this is a numerical solver, but it got very, very close to zero. Uh, and then also our velocity, and because uh, gravity is in the negative direction, so our velocity was 14 meters per second. Uh, that's because this is the... Uh, the second column corresponds to x, or sorry, y dot. So now we have seen uh, how to solve ODEs using ODE45 as well as using uh, event finders in order to find uh, when an event occurs with ODE45.